Hello again everyone. Uh it has been a while. Oops. Um it's almost two months. These two months have not been the best for me and so I've been gone. And what happened does give me something to talk about as this channel is about overcoming the bad and so that works out. I noticed how feeling good or bad has such an instantaneous effect on your body and your strength. And that's quite interesting. But let's begin at the beginning. The first thing that happened. Well, this. <laughs> Meh. <sighs> I had an on off button. That didn't want to play along nicely. So, not knowing how to fix it myself, I went to a random guy a few streets over who fixed his computer for a living. Oh, now it's not the on off button. It has feedback, so it can't be that. It must, it must be the power supply. Okay, if you say so. Oh, no, still doesn't work. Oh, then, yeah, then it must be the motherboard. Okay, so replacing a motherboard. He spoke uh, to the manufacturer and they said I didn't have an enough cooling um, on my CPU. So that fried everything. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and I, I needed a new, a new uh, a cooler. But yeah, he didn't. Uh, build computer, so he sent me through to a bigger store, and they put it all together, and it still didn't work. The people at the bigger store just immediately checked um, if the power button itself worked, since that was the problem. So he used a screwdriver just to connect the two connectors on the motherboard itself, and bloop, it booted. So yeah, he immediately just figured out it was the power button that did not work. I uh, found a snap in the cable and he soldered that and it was fixed. <sighs> so yeah, hilariously stupid as that whole ordeal was, it did leave me without a computer and without the ability to create. On top of that, a few other interpersonal situations went sideways and when I thought they would all work out, they didn't. Which happens sometimes. And all that together did have a physical effect on me. I'm pretty used to that with stress and yeah, visiting the toilet. Uh, should have gone into detail on that. But I'm used to those things having a negative effect on me when I have a panic attack or things like that. Though it's still interesting how large that effect is, when I tried to exercise, I could barely do a single pull up, when I usually average around 6. But it sounded quite strange to me to measure mental health in pull ups. <laughs> but your body and your brain are the same thing, they're intertwined, they are just two parts of a whole. They affect each other. It's all, all connected and taking care of one strengthens the other. Though it's not like emotions are a magical substance that makes muscles plop out of nowhere where fat used to linger. But it may strengthen you to achieve your goals. And um, last year I couldn't do a single pull up, but I got to an average of 6 at the moment by just practicing 4 times a day. <laughs> so yeah, during this time things went wrong, I didn't have a computer and I felt down. And you might call it depression, mild depression, but labeling does not matter that much. I felt bad and that had an effect on me and it weakened me noticeably. I did not have the energy, I just lay on my couch practicing my Latin semi-effectively. Laying there, not doing much, 
PC broken, things not working out, just feeling bad, things going wrong. Until I looked over at my bed and I still knew I had a project waiting. I wanted to turn my bed into a huge canopy bed where I drape fabrics over the side and build curtains on top to build my own little cocoon. And I love little cocoons, they're so nice and cozy and safe. It was a project that I had planned for over a year and I was going to do it now. I still did not have my computer. So what's a better time than now? And within seconds I jumped up from the couch, started collecting fabrics from my stack and draping them across the floor, thinking and planning what would work together. I was back to jumping with energy while thinking, instinctively grabbed my pull-up bar and did a few pull-ups while I was able to look at my, at that point, still bare bed frame, picturing the draping across the sides and the canopy, what I was going to do with the curtains. It was a large puzzle that I had to put together and think about. The project gave me a goal again. The most noticeable thing for me that surprised me was the effect was instantaneous. As in, I was laying on the couch doing nothing and seconds later I was just picking out fabrics and being busy and feeling good. I still want to work on a video, especially as i already chosen that to be the thing I want to focus on at this point in my life. But I had my energy back and as long as I did not have a computer, I could not really effectively work on my videos. So it was a good target for my focus. But the energy showed me how important it was for me to create. I thrive on it. And how I always have to build something to create something. And I was reminded of my videos. How I wanted to create and to hopefully bring something positive. And to also challenge myself with something difficult. As, and something as simple as building a bed, or relatively simple, reminded me what I needed to survive. I needed to create. And I was reminded about how doing things gives you the energy to do those things. It's, it's just a loop. And the general good rule of thumb is, the more you undertake, the more energy you will have as a result. And besides being true in general, this is also reflected in that physical activity outside is often used in therapy for depression and fear. That could be running and any other sports. I take a slightly more intensive approach, but that's not the point right now. Find the thing that pushes you forward, that you thrive on, will most probably help you be to become stronger. Your mind and body are not separate. When you feel down, you might have less energy. And when you feel cheerful, you might be able to do things you couldn't do before. Another example was one time I felt great and something good happened. I can't remember what, but I know I felt cheerful. And I jumped up, grabbed my pull-up bar and did eight pull-ups in a row, which was a new personal record. And yeah, I still think measuring mental health in pull-ups is still a bit silly. But it, sh it showed me how much of an effect ha it has. But you will need energy to start undertaking. And that's not easy when you're a farting sack of cauliflower laying on the couch. But finding something that pushes you may just make it easier. And it just becomes a spiral. The more you can do, the more you will be able to do. Though there are always limits and all other factors and you should not push yourself beyond your boundaries. But there are always many factors. And you should always listen to yourself, see what you can do. And I'm a massive proponent of intrinsic motivation. Push yourself forward from within and not as much from factors outside. So 
I want you to listen to yourself more than you're listening to me. That sounds a bit silly, but meh, I care. <laughs> and your body is great at acclimating to new situations. When you push yourself further, your body may adapt and it will try to become good enough to take that situation on. And that's how you grow and that's for example portrayed in muscles. When you train your muscles, you break down your muscles and your body adapts to grow more muscles and become stronger. And that works in many factors, also mentally. And everything I just said was very simply put and there are many other factors as your body is a complicated machine and every person has different issues, things that might not make it that easy. So that's why I'm saying listen to yourself more than you're listening to me because I just want to share my own experience. But I have noticed and realized the more you are active, the more active you will become. And that's applicable to many types of situations. Like I cycle everywhere and I've gotten used to that. And when it rains or it's cold, meh, I'm cold and it rains. The human body can adapt within its limits. And when it rains and it's cold, I'm fine with it. And for the most part, my body is. That's both mentally and physically. Though you can't push your body too far. <laughs> I'm not saying that things magically are superhuman when you feel good. I wish that was true. That would be amazing to just picture myself flying and I can fly. Yeah. And yeah, when I feel bad, I may go for a little cycling trip like I did last month. And it usually at least helps a little. And if not, I at least had fun climbing random objects that I'm not supposed to and doing other silly things. <laughs> and it's quite healthy to cycle. So yeah, <laughs> positive all around. And another way to look at it, your body will try to survive with the lowest amount of energy possible. And that might be why humans tend to be lazy, because spending energy is not fun. But it might not be the best long-term strategy for survival, especially when you want to achieve goals or get the most out of your life. Then being lazy might be the worst thing you could do. When we train our body to do something every day, it adapts and it becomes easy and normal. We acclimate and we feel better for it when we are able to achieve goals and things we want to push ourselves forward to. And on top of that, when we achieve our goals, do the things we strive for, our bodies will reward itself. And that of course makes it easier to do it again. And then you get reward again and it becomes easier next time and the next time. And it becomes normal. So yeah, I'm going back to my doing. And I know I need to create. Because that's what's required for me to feel fulfilled. And then this, this presenting is kind of hard. But yeah, seeing as I couldn't communicate at all in the past, it's a bit of an improvement. But I will try to keep making my videos and hopefully bring out something good. And if that all works out and I've, and I've got better at presenting, that would also lead to a bit less editing work. <laughs> and more being awesome. Because, yeah, this uh, editing is also kind of hard when my computer is still acting up a bit, so I still have to fix that. <sighs> First, let's enjoy my lovely, lovely cocoon. Yay! Oh, I still have to edit. Okay, let's get back to work.